Hello guys, welcome back. Today I'm looking at Abbey Fine Reader 14 Corporate. I've just downloaded the demo version of the website and I'll put the link up now. I did a previous video a few years ago on Abbey Fine Reader 12 so I thought it was about time I did an update see if there's any changes and see what the new interface looks like. So why don't we get straight down to it. So go and download the demo, have a little play of it. First option is you get this interface is the option top left hand corner which is open, scan, compare and then any recent files that you've been working with or projects. Now on the open option it gives you two options first which is open a PDF document. Now if I hover over it you can see on the right what kind of PDFs I can manage then edit and compress. Click here open an OCR editor so this specifically opens it up in an OCR editor where I can edit. I'll show you that in a minute because what happens then is you can use these layers to then edit your PDF. I can choose where I want to convert to portable document format to Microsoft Word or maybe Excel for spreadsheets and we've got other formats there including rich text format PowerPoint. Then you've got the scan option here so I'll show you how to set up your scanner in a minute. I'm using all in one workforce scanner and printer so we'll see how that goes. Also if we come to the right here again we can scan from the OCR editor which I will show you in a minute as well and again you can choose which format you want to scan to be it PDF, Word, Excel or even to scan to specific images and you can see by using a scanner or camera or you can scan in other formats again. We've got another option where you can compare two documents to see if there's any changes. Could be really useful if there's two different versions of the same documents and see what's been changed. We'll have a quick look at that as well. And again as I said here you've got recent files that I've been playing around with. Now what I want you to do first is come down bottom left hand corner and select the options button. Now I want to go through these quickly because you need to preset up things first. So the first option here is asking you to open a new optical character recognition project. So every time you start the program you'll get a new option to start a new project as you can see here. Or you can select this option, open the last OCR project. So the one you've been last working on that will automatically open for you when you start every fine reader. Underneath this is the important part, select device. Now choose your scanner. I'm currently using the Epson as I said but you can use the OptiBook as well if you've got that or whatever scanner you've got. The OptiBook is a flatbed scanner and really good scanner specifically for scanning books so that really worked well. Also the Canon is quite similar it doesn't need an additional power it just runs off the USB so you can take it with you to libraries and it's quite quiet. But as I'm using the all-in-one I'll select OK. Now underneath here you need to choose do we want fine readers interface which is scanners only or use scanners interface. So what this means is use Fine Reader's interface. So when you've got a scanner connected, it brings up a specific interface that you can scan from. So you can choose, for example, the dots per inch you want, the resolution and stuff. Or you can use your built-in one. So for example, if you've installed an Epson or Canon, it will use that scanning software to scan for you, not the built-in system within Abbey Fine Reader. But I find the system in Abbey Fine Reader works quite well, so I'm actually going to use that. Next you can make this default with your PDF viewer but I'm using Adobe Reader so I'm going to stick with that but again choice is yours. Come up to image processing. So first option you've got to enable background recognition and PDF editor. What this enables you is OCR runs in the background so when you open a PDF and you can edit it if you want and search it. A really good option. So I'm going to leave that ticked. Next we've got automatically processed page images as they are added to the OCR editor. Now you need to choose which setting you want. Now first option is recognise page images. When images are opened in OCR editor, which I'll show you in a minute, they will automatically be pre-processed. So I'll show you that in a second. So what that means is, when I select this option here, if I come underneath here with image pre-processing settings and select show advanced settings, whatever options I choose here will automatically be done if I choose the first option. So let me give you a quick outlay of what some of these things do. Correct page orientation will turn it around to the correct way it's meant to be up. Or you might decide you want to use the skew images. This program will automatically detect skewed pages and correct skew if necessary. So for example, if you've scanned something or something's come a bit distorted, you can use the skew the skew option. Should make that a bit better. Does it automatically for you, so I don't know how good that is. Again, we've got correct image resolution. The program will automatically detect or automatically determine the best resolution of your image. Let's go down to reduce ISO noise. Now what I want to show you on there is, see the little stars? That stands for photo images. So this is relevant to any photo images you're taking or scanning. So reduce ISO noise, a program will automatically remove noise from photographs. So that should tidy up and sharpen it up for you. Again, I don't know how good that is. 
you can fix inverted colors on images so for example when appropriate the program will revert the colors of an image so that dark text is printed on a light background so that way you'll be able to see it better convert to black and white if you want as well and you can even remove color marks that's pretty handy actually because it removes any color stamps and marks made in the pen so that's quite good as well so I'm just going to hide that option so that's your first option second option which is analyze page images image pre-processing and document analysis are performed auto so what that means is so OCR has to be started manually you'll see that when we go into the actual OCR editor and last of all we've got pre-processing and that pre-process is carried out automatically for you so I want to choose the first option which enables all these options underneath as well now go to languages choose your language there I've got specified English but if you're using different languages and documents then you can specify here specifically by adding or you might want to automatically select an OCR language from the following list and this will specify a group for you of languages or you might want a new one and have a look in there and see if there's a new one that you want to add as well this is your optical character recognition engine Again at the top we've got automatically choose between OCR and text from PDF. Now what I want to do here, whenever you see a hyperlink, left click it, brings up the internet for you and it tells you exactly what those options do so you can choose the relevant one. So you can see the first option. The program will examine the text layer and use existing text layer if it contains good quality text. Otherwise optical character recognition will be used to create a new text layer. So that's going to check if there's any good enough quality text there that you can use and edit. Second one, OCR will be used to create a new text layer automatically. This mode takes more time but it's more suitable for documents with poor quality text layers. So bear that in mind. Could be a faint font or anything. Okay. And last of all, we use only text from a portable document format. This is the default mode for PDF documents with text layers. This program will use the original text layer without running OCR. Now remember earlier on we had an option where I could use the text layer in the OCR editor. I'm going to show you that soon in a minute as well. So you see how you can edit it and search it automatically. So bring up every file. So you get stuck, always go to the little links here and you can choose the exact settings you want. Do you want thorough recognition or fast? I like to go forward recognition depending on what you're actually scanning. I mean fast is good if you've got really good quality text fonts from a book or whatever and you want to do them quickly. But I'm always thorough so I want to be thorough with that one. Document type, auto is fine, so it auto detects. You could choose fax if you're using fax or even typewriter. Now, detection of structural elements within a scan document, be that PDF or you scan manually. Have a look here, headers and footers. So, do you want headers and footers enabled? We do. Table of contents, I might want that put in there as well. So, it's going to detect those structures. Numbered list and your footnotes at the bottom. Now here, choose what you want to do if you're using barcodes. If I leave it as it is, it's just going to actually scan the barcode as an image. But if I select the option there, it then converts it into strings, so it converts it into letters and numbers or whatever the barcode is. But I prefer to have that as an image. Now the bottom bit. Now you can choose, if you're using unusual symbols for example, then you might want to use this option. Because what this can do, it can check the symbols for you and check them. So you can add them and correct them to make sure they're correct. So if you're using an unusual symbols or anything, it's definitely worth using the option here. So you could use training to recognize new characters and ligatures. So that will come up and it actually scans something it doesn't recognize. So then you can edit and get the correct one. Or you might want to use use user patterns. They've got built-in patterns there you can use as well. And you can change loads of patterns and languages here if you want. I'm using standard text, so I'm going to use built-in patterns for that. Again, select fonts to be used when recognized text. So you might want a specific text that you want to use, so you might untick bad script and or Arial Narrow or Arial Black, it's up to you, but I'm going to leave the default fonts. Format settings. Now document types here. So PDF and on the right these are the settings for my PDF. Image quality balanced. Obviously best quality will take longer and it'll be a bigger file. But again, it all depends on what you're doing. So I'll leave it on balanced. You can protect a document with a password if you want as well. Or you just want to use A4 maybe. Or maybe you don't want to use A4 for paper size for all pages. You can choose that. Again, you've got precise scan to smooth characters on page images if you need that. It's worth playing around with that to see what the quality comes up like. Now, searchable PDF settings. Remember what I said to you earlier about text layers. So you can choose whether or not you want the text under the page image, text over the page image, or text, text and picture only. 
Again, you can create bookmarks from headings if you want and create a PDF tag. Tags, of course, enable you to search different files and information documents. So it's good to create tags. And we've got use Windows fonts or you can use predefined fonts if you want. I'm going to use the Windows fonts. Again, you can go through various settings, maybe Word, document layout. You might want an editable copy, you might want a SAT copy, so it keeps the pictures and structure how you want it. Or you might want formatted, just plain text. I'm going to use the SAT copy. Again, default paper size, I'm happy with automatic. Keep pictures, I'll leave it in compact size. Again, depends on what you're doing. Again, you choose your options here to keep headers if you want, keep text and background colours. And again, you might want to highlight low confidence characters, but again, you're not sure that's going to come up, so again, play around with that. And again, at the bottom here, preserve document metadata such as authors and keywords. You can edit that, and then you can change the metadata for the title, author, subject, and keywords. It's also very useful when you're using HTML as well. So then you've got your Excel, you can go through your settings there, and your PowerPoint, and so on. I'm going to go to other. This is your main setting, so we've got English, I'm fine with that. Number of processors core to use for OCR. Now I'm not quite sure how good that is, but I've currently got six cores. But I'm going to leave it on default anyway, because I've got no issue, it seems to be scanning lovely and processing quick. Check for updates. I would check for updates, tick that. Download and install without warnings? No, because you might be doing something at the time. So don't do that. Anonymous share, happy find reader settings in order to improve software. That's a good thing to do if you need to, and so special offers if you need to upgrade at a later date. So I'm going to click OK, go back to the main interface which was open. Now we were talking about OCR Editor earlier, weren't we? Various settings that we set up so it would do it automatically for us, remember? So let me go to Options, because it was a while ago, and we had Image Processing, and I chose this option here, Recognize Page Images. And this is what I'm going to pre-processing settings are here, look. Now that option's here, Opening Optical Character Recognition editor. So I'm going to bring it up and open up a PDF. I've got one on a DM770 Olympus there, so I'm going to open that up and use that as a, as a sample. It shouldn't take too long to do 92 pages. And there we are. You can see it's opened on the left here, and on the right we've got the set copies. So if I click through it here, you can see all my copies to the right. So I'm original on the left and my copies on the right just going to go to the second one actually now have a look here you see it's color coded stuff green so what that's done is that's seen it as text so you can see the green which is indicating that it's seen that as text coming at the top here text so I'm happy with that but remember if something isn't text for example I'll click on picture hold the left button and let's just make out that's an image I've now turned that into an image so when I export it over to here you can see that will turn as an image and I can no longer edit the text. If I come into here, I can edit the text. So you can choose which is an image and which is text if you want as well. Also, I'm going to come down to the next page here. Now we could look at these and we could say tables, these ones for example. But again it's text, but there might be tables there. So if I click on tables, hold the left button create a rectangle around you see it turns the bluey purpley color that indicates that's now a table structure so it's important you do that depending if it hasn't scanned correctly and what you want but again as text I'm going to hold the left button I'm happy with that so I'll create a rectangle around it again so what I'll do now is I can recognize the page again by clicking the button there and it brings it all back for me and it's recognized it maybe I could have gone around better up there to the right as you can see but you, you'll get the idea with that. Also, stuff you might not want there. So if I click delete option, hold the left button, let go, and then I can choose what I want to delete. Now it hasn't deleted to the left here, the original, but look to the right. You can see it's now gone. So you can delete what you don't want in there instead of you having to highlight and click the backspace or delete button. Again, go to the top. You could go control Z or just click undo. Bring it back if you want as well. So we've got text that looks for text pictures, tables and delete. Got a hand tool so you can drag stuff around if you want to as well and a select tool to click on what you want. There's another important option here which is the reorder option. It depends, it can be important. I'm going to click it. Now have a look what it's done. You've probably seen it's numbered it in the corners. One, two, three. Now what we can do is we can reorder. So I'm going to click into there and it changes that to number one. 
What that means is when you actually export the document, when you use a tab option, when you need to tab through stuff, it will tab in the order that you create the numbers. So you can tab through a document how you want to tab through it. So that's another little great option. I'm going to run highlight that anyway. Again, we can edit the image here as well. Now, you probably think, well, you're editing it anyway. You, you're not. If I click Edit Image, it brings us to a new window. There's all my files to the left again, but to the right, I've got options where I can use a de-skew option, current page, or odd pages, even pages, or I can do all pages if I've got an image there. We can rotate and flip, so I can rotate by 180 if I want, and rotate again right round. You might want to split a document, you can split a document in two, let me show you. I'll split this anyway. So I just want to do a current page, we're looking at table contents. Now, because I've clicked on it, I haven't clicked on anything else yet, I've just clicked split. See that little knife? So if I come along, I can choose left click where I want to split. There you go, one and two. I've now split it. Now I can split by line or split automatically. Split by line. I've now cut that in two. So look to the left here, I've got two and three. So you can split whatever you want as well. Also, you can crop, don't want it in there. You can invert. So I'll click invert, and I was sure that earlier we can change the colours invert for black background and white and vice versa. And click it again, brings it right back. And again, you always got that option to do all pages if need be. Resolution, brightness and contrast. Again, could add a bit of brightness there. Or bring it back down. Oh, maybe a bit too much there, eh? And you can apply that or reset it. So I'll click reset. Levels, so you can choose your levels and erase what you don't want. So it says hold down the left mouse button to select an image or fragment. So I've hold the left button down and I've just deleted it out quickly. So you can tidy up documents and get rid of what you don't want. Also in this interface, bottom right hand corner, you can zoom in and out with the option here. And if you need to, you can fit to height and fit to width. Let's fit back to height. Or if you need to, you can do best fit. So there's your settings on the right in the editing mode. At the top here, again we can go to new task or new OCR and again we can go OCR project if we want to open or we can scan again or we can scan from the scanner which I'm not going to do yet we'll do that in a minute this number of pages I've got and I can re-recognize the document once I've made changes as well here's your languages you can add or if you need to recognize also you can undo with the undo or control Z as well now I can save this if I want using the save option and I can choose what I want to save it to as maybe a searchable PDF so I can edit it look for stuff within that PDF or maybe I only want an image only which is normal standard PDFs or we've got Word, Excel maybe you want to save electronic publication like ebooks or maybe the internet HTML or rich text format there's so many different formats you can play around with so definitely have a look at that you can even send that to Amazon Kindle which is pretty cool now when you do save it's important to choose how you want to save it let me show you so I've got an exact copy I chose let's put edited copy and click recognize see how it comes up now you can see it's made it into an editable copy but it hasn't quite kept the format the same you see the little tables have gone in boxes so it depends if what you want to do with it really and we've got plain option you can change you can see that's changed to plain text and flexible layout I prefer a SAT copy so I can work exactly from the other one that I was originally had to the right here you can choose to keep pictures if there was some or not or get rid of them and the same goes to here, you can keep headers and footers or click or get rid of them, so look at the bottom left hand corner it's getting rid of the foot of the number there so again, choice is yours now what I want to do is, I'm going to come over to the right here which is the edited one we can click into it so we can see we can edit what we want in there highlight what we want and do what we want with that now you can change table of contents, you can change your headings or whatever you want on there also, you've got a style editor so you can have specific styles if you want for the editor here also you can choose your fonts and you've got your bold, underline, italicize and superscript. You can center information if you want here as well and you can make increase font size or decrease it or choose a font size there. You can add symbols if you want, unusual symbols if you require. Also edit a hyperlink. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to highlight that word at the top and click the E option here, edit hyperlink there's the word I want to hyperlink, now I can hyperlink to a website so let's just put keep it simple and then that will click OK when I click on that link hover over it you can see it goes straight to that website using the control shortcut 
Also, if I click on that hyperlink option, you can do it from a local file on your computer. Maybe you want to link it to a specific document. You can do it that way. Same goes, you can email it straight away to an email address, so that would obviously change to an email address. Where would we pronounce this? Redaction or redaction? I'm going to click on it anyway. And what you can do is, if I hold the left button and create a little rectangle around that, what you can do is hide confidential information quickly before you actually save it. So I might want to get rid of all that. And you see it blanks it out to the left as well on the original PDF as it does on the right the edited bit. Tap back off it so when I export that then that will be hidden for you. So that's for confidential information. You might be doing a psychology degree or medical and that could come in quite useful. Also I can find information within that document. Let's have a little look. Click turn in. Select match if I want or find in all pages. Now I want to go direction down because I'm at the top of the document. Find next. And you see it's found it for me. Let's drag that over. Find next again and it'll go through all your documents looking for the word next. And you can go back up again using that option up and click close. So that's another powerful option. So once you've actually converted it, you can still edit it here to the right. And you can see here, which I showed you earlier, how this PDF file contains a text layer. And that's how we can edit it as well. Also, the images here you can see are red, which I indicated earlier with red. These are your images here. Now, if I hover over them, see to the right here, we've got a little pop up window. So if I click text, it turns it automatically to text quickly. So you don't have to go up to the top here and do a rectangle on it to create it. Or you might want that as a table, but we definitely want that as a picture. Or you might want it as a background picture in the background more. Or if you need to, you might actually see that as a barcode if it's not picking up correctly. So that's this little shortcut key to the ribbon at the top for you. So bear that in mind. As we get rid of them on the left here, so let me click the little option here and select text. You see to the right here it disappears when it will be exported and saved. But let's put that back to how it was, shall we? And that's another good option. Hold the left button, you can do it from the top as well. And add the image straight back. Now what we haven't done yet is actually save it, have we? So I'm going to save it as an exact copy, so I'm going to keep pictures and keep headers and footers as well. I'm going to click save, I'm going to save it as a Word document, save it to my desktop and I'm going to leave it at that name as copy and click save. Now as you see here, because I've got the demo version, it's restricted to three pages, no problem. Select that and we should have the first three pages converted for us. And there we go. And you can see the third page which I cut in half earlier, so that's classed as a page. And that's how easy it is to work and convert. So I'm going to close that, come back to Happy Fine Reader. So that was just using the PDF option, wasn't it? So I'm going to go to New Task. Before I go to Scan, I want to quickly go to Compare. Click on Compare, so we can compare two documents identical and see what the changes are, if there is any. I'm going to click Open Abbey Compare Documents. So I'm not tried this yet, but I've got files there we can try it out with. So I need to drag a document here, click or select files. So I'm going to click, and I've got two here. I've got one there, copy and the original. So I'm going to open up that DM Olympus again, let that import in. And I'm going to do the same here by putting a copy in. And then we'll see if it will compare any differences. I've changed a few little things on it. And you can see the first number three, can you see that? I'll put playing back when it should be played back on the original one on the left. So here we choose the language, English is fine. There might be foreign language in there yet, I haven't checked, but I'll just stick for English for now. Again, find differences in punctuation, so I look for punctuation differences, and find one letter differences, so I'm going to click compare. Give it a little while, because it will look at all the pages within that document. Right, all done, that took about two, two and a half minutes. It says at the top the differences found in body text 11, total 13. So you come up to the top here, page 1, it says recorder, it's incorrect. And we can see with that symbol. Then we go to 2, and it's got text deleted. Again on page 1, playback is incorrect, it should be playing back. Then you can see the arrows are indicating what's right and wrong. And again, I can go through my whole document, checking it. Let's go to page 2. And again on page 2, you can see the top option recording. See on page two, the uh, and's incorrect as well. Mold and mold's incorrect. You can see on both sides there, and so on. So you can then check it all. You can come up here and go to your next differences using the arrows. You don't have to click on them if you don't want. And you can even ignore the differences if you want to. So, 
So you might want to choose to save differences by clicking that option here so you can save the differences. Or again you might want to correct them. So let's go to procedure and criteria. Here we go. You might want to change them. So if I right click on text edit, copy difference or ignore them and then you can edit them how you want to edit them. So I think that's a pretty good option actually to check two documents and then you can correct the differences what's wrong if you need to and then save them if you want. Or save them individually here to exactly how you want. So I'm going to come back out of there and put don't change. Let's go back to actually scanning now. So I'm going to go back to new task. So we looked at opening a document and converting it and there's various methods you convert it to. I've just used Word as a, an example. Try it out with Excel and other formats. Now I'm going to go to the scanning option. Now remember what we set up earlier and I'm going back to this because it was a while ago. You can choose whether you want to use Fine Reader Interface for scanners only or use Scanner Interface. So that will be the scanners that come with it for example. It could be a Canon or Epson scanner software. But I'm using the Fine Reader one so I'm going to click OK. So when I click Scan to OCR Editor, this is what they mean. This is the scanning interface Happy Fine Reader and I like it. It's straightforward, it's quick and it gives me the options I need. So we chose your scanner earlier, but select the device there to make sure you've got the correct scanner and it's connected. Bear in mind, if you're doing Wi-Fi, it's a lot slower. Remember to the left, I showed you this option earlier, so you can choose what you want. I'm recognising page images, so it chooses all my imaging processing settings here that I want. So I'm happy with that. You can add more options if you want and change your options than before. So now I'm now ready to scan, make sure you choose your correct language. Now just one other thing, come to the top here. Don't worry about colour brightness, you can do that afterwards. This is the one I want. Dots per inch. You need to choose the quality of the scan. Now not all scanners go up to 1200 dots per inch. I think this one does do 600, that's its limit. It's an all-in-one. I find flatbed scans are more inaccurate, but again, it's a matter of opinion. Now if it's for normal text, they recommend 300 dots per inch because 600 takes a lot longer. But that's good for really small text or integrate text. So again, you're going to have to play around with that. So I'm going to do it on, I'm going to do it on 300 dots per inch. A4 paper is absolutely fine. Got my flatbed scanner. Now, on my workforce one, I've got a document feeder option there as well. So I can use the flatbed on it, which I'm doing now, or I could use document feeder, which is quite handy. So as long as I've got the documents obviously separated, I could put them in there and then it will scan them all off me one after another. But I'm using the flatbed today. And what do I want to scan one page? Absolutely. But if you've got multiple pages, you have to keep opening the flatbed scanner and putting them in. I want to choose one of these options. So for example, if I was hovering it up, see it's got rid of the scan one page now, it's unselected it. So every 10 seconds it will scan automatically. So that way you can stand there putting the book down or whatever you're scanning one after another quickly. Okay, but I'm just going to scan one page, so I'm selecting that option. Click off it and it should start scanning, which it's just doing now. So there you go, I've scanned the page and this page is from Supernova, which is a fabulous bit of software for people with visual impairment. Now I'm looking at that, I don't know what you think, but it's not looking great, is it? It's not looking that sharp. Now what I could do, I suppose, to come back up here, I could use maybe a bit of brightness. Drag that down, now click preview. See how it comes up. So it's going to rescan it. So I don't know if that's going to improve it. There you go. That's a bit better already. Then again, you can add brightness if you want as well. But I'm going to select automatic. I'll probably select automatic for next time. And we've got colour. So I'm happy with colour option. I could have done black and white as well. Probably would have been better. And there you go. I've got my image. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to rescan it with my changes. And now I've scanned it. You see, it automatically brings me up to the editing option here. Now, do I want to finish scanning? Absolutely. Select that option and let it recognise it. And what it's doing is looking for text or tables or pictures. And you see, it's automatically turned it around for me because I chose those settings, remember? In pre processing. So there we go. So we've got the purpley ones that are my tables here. Yeah, I'm quite happy with them. Look here on the right. That's perfect. This is my text boxes. I'm happy with that green. And there's no images there, is there? So there you go. And again, I can choose on the right a SAT copy or editable copy. Or you can choose plain text. So you can choose how you want that to be before you save it. And just a quick point. If I come down the bottom here, I also selected this when we set it up. We've got a zooming option here at the bottom. So if I come to the right here, let's zoom 200%. 
that will zoom in on the left here so you can see that bar going up and down here can you see it going up and down so I can see exactly what I'm working on here if I need to if you don't want that bottom zoom pane click off it down the bottom and it just leaves you the left and right window and that brings it back again and if you're not happy with that interface it's no problem come up to view you can choose how you want it to look you've got navigation pane you can choose what you want to be shown there's right and you might decide actually no I prefer that on the left so you can move around your interface and how you want it using a few option again we've got the recognize option here these are all the options we've got here anyway but it gives you them additionally recognized and then you've got your area that we used as well we can reorder and delete areas also you've got your tools option now I'm going to look at this here I'm going to go to a few dictionaries that's okay so we've got a built-in dictionaries there so I'm using my Microsoft one you can see the dictionary there that's fine I'm happy with that but again you choose the one you want also in tools we've got the pattern editor I showed you at the beginning remember if you come across certain symbols that it's not recognizing correctly you can set that so every time it scans it gives you the option to choose and correct them style editor as well which is this to the right here red action mode which gets rid of confidential information automated tasks I click that you can oh you can actually create automated tasks I click new so you can create your work, own workflows here by creating a new one and choose exactly how you want to do it when you open a document that's pretty cool actually that will save loads of time so if you're doing something repetitively also also we have compared documents now screenshot reader let me show you what that does now it's a little window I think you have to register it when you first use it it's free as well so what I can do with this I'm going to open up a web page and show you exactly what this does I want to go to Google Books right let's find a book with a preview that would do and there we go so I'm going to scroll down and if you've never used Google Books you know the text is not accessible so if I hold the left button I can't highlight it I could take the screenshot come with the shortcut key or we could even use the uh, snipping tool but why don't we use this option that comes with Abbey Fine Reader now I can catch it by area window screen or time screen I'm going to do an area because I can hold the left button and create a rectangle around what I want. Language English is definitely that and send to so I can send it straight to Microsoft Word or even clipboard into memory or you choose again which one you'd like to send it to. You can even send it straight to OCR editor where we're looking at Abbey Fine Reader. We've got some really good options there but what I'm going to do is send that to Word. So I'm going to click on it, see a little cross, hold the left button, create a rectangle around the text I want and then at the bottom right hand corner I've got a capture option I'm going to left click that let's see if it captures it into a word document for me it opened up automatically for me I didn't have to do a thing and now look we've got standard text so stuff you can't assess I could highlight and then color code stuff information that you might want nice little add on there I think really good option to use when you're working with outside your Abbey Fine Reader I think that's rather a nice touch. Right guys, well there's the basics of using Abbey Fine Reader. There's a lot more to it, so have a look at the help file here and select help and it'll give you more information. But I like the way the layout works, I like the way you can click on things and the workflow works really well. Hope that was a help, thanks for watching.